What's up guys, welcome to Freedive Passion. Today I'm going to show you some of the knots that I use for freediving. If you don't know this about me, I love knots. It's good to have a knot for every situation that you might need. And if you do, your life becomes a lot simpler. The first knot I'm going to show you guys is the bowline. The bowline is a way to create a loop at the end of the rope. So you can use this loop to attach to a boat or to attach your um, the end of your line to a bottom weight. The nice thing about a bowline is no matter how much strain the knot is put under, it's still easy to undo. So to do it, you would normally put your rope through the thing you want to tie onto and create a loop the size you want it to be. So let's say this size and leave some spare tail at the end. This is what you'll use to create the knot. You then create another loop here. Now you want to make sure this bit is on top. A lot of people mess up at this point. You will then go up through the loop you've created, making this the size you want it to be. This is the loop that you're gonna make on the rope. Then you'll go under the bottom Okay, not over the top, make sure it's under the bottom, and then back through. Then all you will do is pull on this part and this part to tighten up the knot. This is the bow. This is the loop. Okay, and then no matter how tight that is, no matter how tight that's pulled, all you have to do to undo it is flip it over, you take the loop, you unlock it like this, Take it, take some of the rope through, and it's very easily undone. Now one downside to the bowline is that if it's under tension and then not, it can start to kind of loosen up like this. So say for instance waves pulling you in and out of the knot, and it can work itself undone potentially if it's not always under constant strain. So there's another type of knot that I can show you called the Yosemite bowline. My friend Sean showed me this one and I really like it. It's the same. Make sure you have plenty of rope at the end. You create your knot, you create your um, the size of the loop you want. You then create this loop again, this one on top. You go through, round below, then back through this little loop again. So that would be a normal bowline if you left it like this. Now all you need to do for Yosemite bowline is go around again and then back through. Again, you can pull it tight, dress the knot, and now you have a more secure bowline. And if you do have this tightening and loosening of the um, rope, the bowline stays secure. And no matter how tight it is, you still simply drop, bring this down and it's easy to undo. You can just feed the rope back through itself. And it's very easily undone no matter how much strain has been on the knot. The next knot I'm going to show you is the clove hitch. The clove hitch is how you can attach your rope to the carabiner. You make one loop like this in front. You make another loop like this behind, so one is in front, one is behind. You then make sure this bit in front and this bit behind meet and are now in the middle. So you can see this is coming out the middle, you can see this is coming out the middle. Then all you would simply do is clip these two loops onto the carabiner, it will tighten up you have the bottom weight coming down and then the top of this going back inside the buoy. So you can see what's happened is no matter how tight this gets pulled, it's just making the knot itself tighter. So there's no way for this knot to come undone. The nice thing about this knot is if you have, for instance, a light bottom weight and you're doing free immersion and you start pulling up slack on the rope, the knot stays tight but it's still quite simple to undo. All you would have to do is open up the carabiner and push it out again. 
Another knot that I've seen people use for this purpose is the cow's hitch. So with the cow hitch, it's quite similar. You make one loop in front, but then the second loop is also in front. Whereas with the clove's hitch, the second loop would be behind like this. So both hip, hip, both uh, loops are in front, and then you simply fold it over like this. And then again, you bring both loops through the carabiner, and you can see both loops come out the same way. Now the problem with this hitch is it doesn't stay tight very well. So if you imagine somebody's pulling on the rope and we're having this same um, bounce, you can see the rope, the knot itself is becoming loose. And what can happen is it becomes loose over the open of the opening of the carabiner and then somebody pulls, it can undo itself like this. And I've seen that happen. So this is why I don't recommend using the cow hitch, I recommend using the clove hitch. In freediving we often find ourselves attached to a cross line, so we'll be in a big chain of boys. If you want to attach your boy to a cross line, or if you want to attach your fins to a cross line, this is a nice knot to use so you don't slide up and down the cross line. So what you need is a piece of string that's thinner than what the rope on the cross line is. You find out which way the current's going, so which way you're going to be pulled, or which way the wind is going to pull you. So let's say it's this way, and you would do four wraps in the opposite direction to the way your boy is being pulled. Four, there we go. Then the fifth wrap will go back over itself. Under. And then through itself like this. So you can see this end bit is kind of like the clove, but with a bunch of extra wraps this way. What's also good is to do a stopper knot here, just so the knot can't pull itself through. And this side would be attached to your fins or your boy. And now what happens is no matter how tight it gets pulled the opposite way, the knot won't slide up the cross line. Now, if you have been getting pulled quite hard, this knot can become really tight and it might seem like it's hard to undo. But all you have to do is find which way this bit has been twisted and twist it the opposite way. This loosens up the knot and helps you undo it. Another really useful knot is called the double fisherman's. It can be used either to attach two pieces of rope together, as long as both pieces of rope are the same thickness, or to make a permanent loop attaching a rope to a carabiner, for instance. So to attach the rope to the carabiner, you would go around through the carabiner. It would be even safer if this is a closed carabiner here. Then you go over, create an X, so you can see this X here, back over again, and then you go underneath the X, and you can pull it tight, cinch it up, you know you've done it correctly, if you have the rope coming in parallel here, coming out parallel here, you have an X on one side, and you have two parallel lines on the other side. This is a slip knot, so then you'll simply pull the rope back through until it's tight on the carabiner. If you want to use this knot to attach two ropes together, then you can do that also. This knot's quite hard to undo, so you would only use this if you want the ropes to be permanently attached. So you do basically the same knot, but over the top of the other rope. So you go around, back on itself, creating this X underneath and then back through the X just like the old knot this is attached now now on the other side you do the same thing you would go around over itself creating the X underneath underneath the X tighten that side up too 
and then you will simply pull both ropes until the knots meet. If you do it in a nice way, you'll have these X's and they're kind of snug up against each other. And on the other side, you'll have these four lines going straight again. Now as an added bonus, I'll show you the sheep bend or a double sheep bend. This would be used if you want to attach two pieces of rope and um, they can be of different thicknesses, different diameters, which is very useful. And also this one is easier to undo than the double fisherman's. So to do this, you would create a bite. This bit is what we call a bite. You would come up, round the back, and you would simply go through here, the bit that's come up, round again, then back through, okay, and that's the knot, and you would just pull all of it tight, and then that's a semi-permanent join, which is it's quite secure, I wouldn't like to trust my leg to it, but you could, and the nice thing about it is no matter how tight it's been pulled, just like the bowline, if you find this bow, you simply release the knot like this and pull some slack through, and then you're good. Okay, so that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have some knots that you like to use that you think are really helpful, then comment below and maybe I'll make another video about these extra knots as well. Okay, so until next time guys, take it easy and dive safe.